When you first buy an Amiga, initially you'll be impressed by the classic game's amazing sound and technically brilliant demos. But inevitably you'll stumble across something, a game or some productivity software perhaps, that makes you wish for something faster. What you need is an accelerator card and in today's video we're going to take a look at three of them for the Amiga 1200. This is the A1200 Accelerator Showdown. Now before we start getting into the shootout itself, we need a quick history lesson. The original Amiga, the A1000, came with a Motorola 68000 clocked at 7.14 MHz. And as it turns out, the Amiga 500, 500 Plus, 2000, and 600 all used the same CPU running at the same clock speed. It wasn't until the dawn of the AGA chipset in the Amiga A1200 where the CPU was upgraded to a 68020 clocked at 14 MHz. Accelerated cards were first introduced for the Amiga for power users and people who simply wanted to do things faster and had the money to spend, as well as keeping up with technology. Mac and PC were gaining strides in the CPU processing race, while the Amiga was falling behind. Now, stock Amiga is great for most things, but if you're involved in productivity software, 3D rendering, desktop publishing type stuff, an accelerator device is a must have. So we're going to review three different Amiga 1200 accelerators. The first one being the ACA1221, which is the 68020 accelerator with 64 megabytes of fast RAM. The second being the ACA1232, which is the 68030 at 42 megahertz with 128 megabytes of fast RAM. And the third is the almighty Blizzard 1260-68060 clocked at 50 megahertz with 64 megabytes of RAM. And the test machine is my PAL version Commodore Amiga A1200. Under the hood, it features an Indivision AGA Mark II scan doubler, as well as an IDE Express and a one gigabyte compact flash card. Now the first benchmark I do is a stock Amiga 1200 with no accelerated card. Sysinfo is showing it's running at 1.33 MIPS and 1,283 dry stones. Unfortunately, you can't do much with this particular configuration. Now the ACA1221 fares a lot better. Sysinfo reports it's running at 3.55 MIPS or 3,407 dry stones. Games load just fine on WHD load and Doom Attack runs at 4 frames per second at full screen. Now you do have the option to turn down the screen size to get a couple more frames per second. But let's be realistic about this, this is not playable. It is a nice little tech demo to show off the power of a budget accelerator card like the ACA1221. Otherwise, let's move on. Syndicate runs at a pretty good speed, and what we'll find is as we test more powerful accelerators, the game will run faster and faster. Indianapolis 500 by Papyrus runs a lot better than the stock A500 version, but you can still notice some choppiness in the frame rates. Moving on to the Indivision ACA1232, we see that the 68030 is a lot more powerful, clocking at 9,176 dry stones or 9.57 MIPS. Doom Attack gives us an average 11 FPS. It's borderline playable. Knocking the screen size down a couple of notches will bring it up to about 15. And as expected, Indianapolis 500 runs silky smooth on the 68030. Syndicate runs a lot faster than the 020 version before it. If you've ever seen Syndicate run on a 486 PC, this is approaching that level of performance. The Blizzard 1260. 
The 6806 absolutely dominates the benchmarks, clocking at 38.60 MIPS or 36,982 dry stones. Doom Attack is blindingly fast, averaging around 22 FPS. Now Syndicate runs even faster than the 030 version before it, but the differences are subtle. And finally, in Indianapolis 500, I think it's safe to assume that the frames per second in the 030 version are capped because the 060 version doesn't appear to run any faster. Having access to a fast 060 accelerator opens up the door for 3D ports that aren't normally accessible on lower spec Amigas, and it's certainly something that makes an 060 accelerator board very desirable amongst Amiga fans. So as you can see, having an accelerator card for an Amiga is absolutely essential. Quite honestly, you can't really do much without one unless you want to stick to loading games off floppy disk. Even in its simplest form, if you want to use WHD load, having an accelerator with fast memory is an absolute requirement. You want to go for at least four megabytes of fast memory. Now the good news is a lot of the Amiga accelerators out there have a lot more than four megabytes on board, but just keep that in mind. Now I would say that the sweet spot definitely has to be the 68030 processor. It's the right balance of performance and value. Now, individual computers sell the ACA1233, which is the successor to the ACA1232 that I reviewed, and it's a little bit faster. I believe it comes in 40 megahertz, 50 megahertz, and 55 megahertz models. Personally, go for an 030 model Amiga if Doom style games is something that's important to you. And of course, if you have the opportunity to pick up an 040 or 060 class processor for a good price, I would jump all over that. Now in the next video, we're going to review ECS machines, and by that I mean the Amiga 500 and the Amiga 600. Now we've got some accelerated cards to test out on the A500, and we've got some on the A600. I should also mention the Vampire 2 will not be part of this particular review, since I've already done a comprehensive review on the previous video, but I will include the benchmarks from the Vampire 2 in the next video. And finally, part 3 will be the big box Amigas the A3000 and the A4000. I want to show you the accelerated cards that I have in both of those machines and do some benchmarks around that. And ultimately, you guys can make a decision as to where you think you'll fit if you're looking to pick up an accelerated card. Now, I can't sign off without thanking the Obsolete Geek for lending me his ACA1221 card. Thanks very much, Rob. I much appreciate it. And if you guys don't know who the Obsolete Geek is, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Check out his channel. He's got some great Amiga-related content, as well as a lot of obscure 8 and 16-bit retro stuff. Definitely check out his channel. And as always, guys, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe if you like my channel. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching as always folks, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.